I'm Dr. Drew Miller, Director of Advanced Analysis Applications. I'm an Air Force Academy Honor Graduate with a Master's Degree and PhD from Harvard University. I worked in the Senior Executive Service in the Pentagon, in business at ConAgra, and currently run a management consulting firm that conducts comprehensive risk assessments and helps organizations design robust, cost-effective risk mitigation measures. In this video, we're looking at threats to the electric system in dealing with widespread long-term loss of electric power. The sudden loss of electricity can cause accidents and kill a lot of people. As the power outage continues, people will also die from more accidents and problems like refrigerated drug spoiling. But the biggest threat of long-term power outages is a collapse in economic activity and widespread loss of law and order. This video first reviews threats to the electric system, covering the six vulnerabilities listed here. After explaining these six threats to the U.S. electric system, we'll then go over some measures you need to take to prepare. As you probably know, our electric system, our power grid, is very old and very vulnerable to disruptions. The electric system can be taken down in one area from a wide variety of causes. What's particularly bad, however, is that a problem in one part of the grid tends to spread, causing voltage surges and power fluctuations that damage other parts of the grid. This general electric video explains how a simple lightning strike or a short on one big transmission line can spread to other parts of the grid, spreading blackouts across the system. For example, in 2003, a simple problem that one electric control station caused damage that spread across the grid until it affected 50 million people in eight U.S. states and two Canadian provinces. Some people were without power for a few days, some for up to a week. Since no transformers were destroyed, it was a relatively easy recovery. The new threat to the electric system is cyber attack. Experts have been warning about the vulnerability of our electric system to cyber attack for years. The first actual known successful cyber attack on an electric system occurred in 2016. Russian agents caused a power outage in the Ukraine. We know that Russians and Iranians and other state-sponsored hacker groups have penetrated parts of the U.S. electric system. North Korea, China, Iran, and likely many more countries and some capable terrorist and hacker groups likely have the ability to take down parts of our electric system. A cyber attack would try to exploit the grid's vulnerability to spread the damage to adjacent sectors and damage transformers. If they can destroy transformers, this will cause long-term loss of power, as I'll explain later. Electromagnetic disturbances from the sun are another huge threat to the electric system. Solar flares, coronal mass ejection from the sun, are large clouds of plasma and magnetic field that erupt from the sun and spread to the earth, disrupting the earth's magnetic field, creating electrical currents in the ground that can take down electric systems. A major solar storm, electromagnetic disruption, occurred in 1859, known as the Carrington event, knocking out telegraph systems. Major geomagnetic storms like this, experts estimate, could occur about once a century, but solar weather events happen all the time and several far worse could happen any time. Today's electrical system, and of course our dependence on electricity, makes us far more vulnerable to solar-generated electromagnetic disruption. In 1989, an unexpected geomagnetic solar storm triggered an event on the Hydro-Quebec power system that resulted in its complete collapse in 92 seconds, leaving 6 million without power. The same solar storm triggered hundreds of incidents across the United States and destroyed a major transformer. When a transformer is destroyed, replacing it is extremely costly and difficult, taking months of time, assuming you've got a replacement transformer. People find this incredible, but we don't produce electric transformers in the United States. We have to import them. In good times, this means that if we lost a lot of transformers, it would be over a year to get replacements, and that assumes the foreign producers are willing to ship to us. How severe and, how severe and widespread the damage from a large solar event would be, we can't be certain. Studies and simulations of major solar flares estimate both concentrated regional destruction and outages across the United States and other countries as well. What we can be confident of is that rebuilding electrical system damage will take years when you have widespread system damage and loss of transformers. The fourth major threat to the electric system is a nuclear weapon detonated high in the atmosphere that generates electromagnetic pulse, or EMP. Scientists and electrical system experts have been warning for decades that our electrical system needs major redesign and hardening for protection against a nuclear EMP attack that may require just one or two detonations. 
The damage from a nuclear explosion high over the United States could destroy large parts of our electric grid, as well as destroying computer chips and electronic circuits in cars and buildings across the U.S. Commissions have been formed to study the problem, they've recommended action, but none has been taken. In 2017, another national commission was authorized by Congress to address this problem, but even if action is taken, it will be many years before our vulnerability to a nuclear EMP attack can be addressed. The former head of the CIA recently warned that North Korea's small nuclear force could be using warheads optimized for an EMP attack on the U.S. They would cause far more destruction with an EMP attack than destroying a city, and it does not take good accuracy for an EMP attack. Coordinated terrorist attacks on the electric system, targeted on vulnerable nodes, or just lots of attacks that destroy transformers could also take down our power grid. Like other threats, this has been widely studied and found to be a big risk, but little action has been taken to reduce the vulnerability. You may think that it's just not practical for even a big terrorist group to destroy transformers and towers across the U.S., but they don't need to. Reports estimate that taking out less than a dozen key choke points in our grid could bring down power across most of the United States. In 2014, there was an organized sniper attack on an electrical substation near San Jose, California. Multiple gunmen fired dozens of shots at 17 transformers, causing transformers to fail. Transformers are huge, heavy, some weighing 400,000 pounds or more. Moving and replacing them is very difficult and takes months. They are expensive, three to five million to a piece. Worse, we can't produce them here and in a big crisis, we may not be able to easily import them. If terrorists or a solar event or nuclear EMP attack takes out a lot of transformers, the electric outage is not weeks or months, but a year or potentially years. The final category of electric system damage is follow-on damage, cascading effects that bring down the electric system. We saw this in Japan a few years ago, where an earthquake caused a tsunami, which led to damage to the nuclear power plant at Fukushima, and then a meltdown. A bigger earthquake off one of our coasts, or a big asteroid strike in the ocean, can cause tsunamis far larger, hitting dozens or hundreds of power plants and stations. Experts warn that a new Madrid zone earthquake in the central U.S. could take down power lines and disable power plants over not just a wide area, but prevent power transmission across the United States. In sum, there are many ways our electrical system can go down across larger parts or all of the United States, and with damage it could take months or years to repair. There's a very unwise tendency to focus on the initial disaster and ignore the cascading effects. You can't know how events will unfold, but you can be certain that many other bad effects will be triggered and there will be lots of bad fallout from a major loss of power. Many people and some terrorist groups and enemy states will also likely take advantage of a crippling electrical system outage in the United States. The collapse of economic activity and loss of law and order that follows a major loss of electric power is something you can be sure of. A collapse is defined in this slide. With power out for months or over a year, this could lead to suffering and fatalities that dwarfs any disaster or world war we've experienced. We have not yet experienced a long widespread electrical outage, but experts are convinced we will. As an example of how a blackout can lead to collapse and loss of law and order, we'll now examine the results of a one-day power outage in New York City in 1977. A simple lightning strike took down the electric grid. New York City was paralyzed for a day. It was not the loss of economic activity for a day that was so bad, but the looting, arson, and violence that caused severe damage. Thousands of people took advantage of the blackout to loot. There was no way the police could effectively respond to widespread looting across the city. Police did make valiant attempts and thousands were arrested, but in a major widespread disaster situation, law enforcement will not be able to provide public safety. Things got worse as arson attacks started. Some of the pictures of the New York City blackout look like the aftermath of a World War bombing campaign. Bear in mind, this was just one day of power outage, just 24 hours, and it was many decades ago. The percentage of gangs and just bad people who are willing to loot and start fires and kill people is much higher today. Over 3,000 arrests were made for looting, 400 policemen were injured, and 500 fires were started. In a long power outage, you need to expect immediate life-threatening loss of law and order that could escalate into violence that makes no sense. It was just 24 hours of terror in New York City, and that was back in 1977, where people were generally more civil and lawful than today. Blackouts today, which may last for months or a year if lots of transformers are knocked out, will yield far more destruction and loss of life. 
While it's impossible to calculate the likelihood of electric system failure or the reaction that will occur, you should expect and prepare for months of no electric service and loss of law and order. It is essential that your organization have power to at least run essential lighting, security systems, water pumps, and some refrigeration. Most of our water systems pump up water and use pumps to distribute water, and these are overwhelmingly electric pumps. Many large municipal systems require dozens of pumping stations to bring in and move the water, and in an EMP event or a widespread electric outage, they won't operate. The National EMP Commission has warned that city municipal water systems will be brought down quickly, and in just a few days, there may be no water. People cannot survive without water and will not be able to stay at home without water. Even if the water system is partially operational, people will fill bathtubs and try to grab as much water as they can in a crisis, promoting the collapse of the water system. As people panic and leave to try and get to some place where they can find water, where some others are waiting to steal food and water from them or just exploit the collapse, the loss of life could easily reach millions. Can your organization survive long-term loss of electric power? If you're a business, the ability to operate longer or recover faster than competitors can yield huge profits. But even if you can't maintain power long-term for operations, you must have some electric power to provide security. It is very feasible to have backup power generation. For short-term loss of the electric grid, you may be able to keep full operations with a well-designed plan to cut off unnecessary electric loads. We've helped companies design business continuity plans. In some scenarios, however, you are better off shutting down, securing your plant with a program in place to safeguard your assets and protect your people. But you can't do this without electric power. This video examined a major food company that looked into their ability to weather an EMP attack. Of course, U.S. strategic nuclear forces have hardened electronics and can generate the power they need to operate, but there are some private businesses that have this capability as well. One company that is fully prepared to survive long-term loss of the electric grid is Survival Condo. This luxury survival community has multiple ways to generate power and is designed for long-term operation without connection to the grid. In addition to the large wind generator you can see in this photo, they have two large commercial diesel generators. Hospitals also have diesel backup generators, but unfortunately they only store enough fuel to operate for a few days. You should not size your fuel tanks for an outage of a few days. You need to size them for months of operation and have the research and systems in place to bring your power load down for long-term operation. Survival Condo is designed to keep its members not just safe but comfortable for over a year during the worst possible disaster. And of course they have a huge battery system, walls of batteries so they can store power and operate when wind or solar power isn't coming in and to avoid having to run generators all the time. I've toured one of Survival Condo's facilities and was also impressed with their power control system which cannot be ignored. You must have the ability to monitor and control power, ideally from multiple sources, fully integrated with your battery storage system, and you have to be able to control for fluctuations in electricity quality, supply, and demand. If it's a solar event or nuclear EMP event that causes the collapse of the electric system, then you need to have your generating system shielded as well. Survival Condo handles this easily because they are deep underground behind massive earth-covered concrete walls and huge metal blast doors. You can get more details on Survival Condo at their website or email them at the email address shown here. If you don't have an underground ICBM silo, you can still find cost-effective measures to shield your power generation system. Warren Buffett insists that the CEO should regard his position number one as the chief risk officer. Buffett recommends that you, quote, wake up every morning and think about, is this place built to take everything? Few organizations are prepared to deal with either a long-term loss of the electric system or the breakdown of a functioning society. Businesses and all organizations and individuals need to prepare for long-term power outages and other disasters assuming a collapse of the economy and loss of law and order.